joining us again for YPWW. And tonight we're on lesson number 10, a prayer for walking worthy and being fruitful, part one. Amen. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We magnify your name. God, you are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. And we thank you for your word on tonight. God, we ask that you reveal to us your word. God, give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Again, we're on lesson number 10, a prayer for walking worthy and being fruitful. And our aim of this lesson, it says, the aim of this lesson is to recognize for one to be an effective leader. One must spend time in prayer. And last week we talked about, you know, uh, knowledge, spiritual understanding, and wisdom. And if it's in the Word of God, we found out it's important. But if it's not in the Word of God, then it's not that important. But the fact is, is that if we're going to know Christ for who He is, then we need to know and understand the things that are important to Him. And it is important to have this spiritual knowledge and wisdom and understanding because the more we know and we experience Him, the closer we get to Him. And every time we open up the Word of God in session like these or even in our own private Bible studies, we learn about more about who He is and how much He loves us and His ways and His will. But today, uh, we again, we're in Colossians 1. In verse 10, and that scripture says that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And today we're going to focus on that walking worthy after we're filled with the knowledge and spiritual understanding and wisdom, you know, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. And the way a person walks uh, is an identifier. You in a crowd, you know, I'm a married man. So like uh, even in a crowd. I can pick out my wife, you know, I know my wife's walk, you know, I know her, you know, so uh, it can point out who a person is or, you know, your relatives, you could be your mom, dad, you know how a person, you you can identify a person by how they walk. You can also tell if somebody hurting the way they walk or if somebody's in a hurry or you could tell if a person is confident, you know, or if they are afraid or maybe timid. But when the Bible refers to us walking, it's talking about a person's lifestyle, symbolizing our life. And I personally believe that um, the Word of God uses walking as a symbol because you can tell a lot from how a person walks. You know, when we feel with the knowledge of his will and our wisdom and spiritual understanding, it's that knowledge that will lead us to walk in a way that's pleasing to God. So we really have to understand what this means. Because to walk worthy of the Lord means to live in a way that uh, shows Jesus Christ. You know, to be worthy, it means that you meet a certain standards. And in our case, it's God's standards uh, to live our lives that please him. And when you know and understand God's will, you can't help but love him. You know, you have a desire to do whatever it takes to please him. And the more you know him, the closer you get to him and the more we become like him. You know, and walking worthy for the saints of God, it isn't supposed to be looked at as a job, but as a privilege. And like uh, in John, in John chapter 2 and 9, verses 9 through 11, First John chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, you know, John says it like this. He lets us know that if we're walking in the light, then we're not going to stumble and we're not going to be a stumbling block to other people. But the problem is we get our focus off of Jesus Christ and onto things that we think are important to him. But in actuality, they are important to us. So when we put God in his rightful place, then we can really walk in a way that's worthy of God. And John says that not only will we be walking in the light, but we'll be abiding in the light. That means we'll always be in his presence and we're walking worthy and uh, wanting to live upright before him, that means we will always be in his presence. First Thessalonians 2 and 12 says that you will walk worthy of God who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. And Paul again is here encouraging them, challenging them to walk in a way that's pleasing to God. No longer, he don't want them, he's, his desire for the saints is to no longer live like they want to. But that's something that we have to take notice of as well. You know, we have to make sure that we're living in a way that's pleasing to God. You know, in, in Ephesians 4 and 1, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you 
that you are worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. So we have to walk in a way that's worthy of God. If you're a saint, this is not an option. We have to walk in a way that's pleasing to God. And Paul tells us again here that we are to walk worthy. So we, we are called to live lives that look good to God, you know, that's pleasing to God. We're called to live a life that shows that God has changed us, saved us, and delivered us. And all, you know, we can't never pay back God for what he's done for us. But all he asks us to do is live our lives to the point that's worthy of who he is, what he's done for us, and what he has given to us, who he's given to us in Jesus Christ. So in order for us to walk worthy of the Lord, we need to avoid places, people, things, music, anything that brings temptation to us. We have to make sure we flee from it. So it's necessary to walk worthy of the Lord. Because Matthew 5 and 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So when we walk worthy of the Lord, it's not to make people look at us and say, Man, they really anointed or man, they really in there with God. No, nah, what we want is when we walk worthy of God, we want them to see us and say, they serve a mighty God. They serve a great God. And he is worthy of my life. And he's worthy of my worship. Amen. So we thank God for you joining us for this brief summary of the YPWW lesson. And we'll leave you with question number one in our book on tonight. It says, the Apostle Paul encourages the church at Colossus to walk worthy of their calling as followers of Jesus Christ. What are some significant ways that you can walk worthy as a representative of Jesus Christ publicly and privately? Amen. And let's end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We magnify your name, God. We thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for being a man of your word, never leaving us nor forsaking us. Give us a mind to apply this lesson to our life. We pray for each and every individual that watches this video, God. We pray that you touch them, that you give them strength, that you empower them even now, oh God. That you reclaim the backslider, that you save, deliver, and set free in the name of Jesus. That you refresh the saints all over the land. And God, in these things, we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Thank God for you joining us. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the page. Again, we are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Deedon, Louisiana. Uh, pastor Donald Douglas is our pastor. Thank God for our First Lady, First Lady Douglas. And we just thank God for all of you. We're praying for you. Continue to pray for us. And we'll see you next time.